Hey there, everybody. Cards and Dice TV, Tony Porter, unboxing extravaganza. So over the last three weeks, I've been getting stuff, stuff that I've traded for, stuff that I found kind of somebody just wanted to dump, uh, you know, that sort of thing. And I've just picked up interesting little items here and there that I wanted to share out, you know, something that uh, when, I, when I do an unboxing, I always find that I, it's when I buy a big, like, mother load. And I don't need to do that. I, I don't think that's always necessarily uh, uh, the, the most, the best thing all the time. That's okay sometimes, but I think these other little things that we find on a weekly basis, you know, a book or or a game or something at a good price that somebody's, you know, you you, you bid on or you offer, you make a, a kind of a low ball offer, and they just want to get rid of it. And they just, yeah, okay, whatever, I'll take it. Anyway, so. I traded, uh, I had two uh, Stratomatic sets. I don't play a lot of Stratomatic. I play some Stratomatic. But uh, every so often, I'm in the mood and I'll play a game. I wanted, uh, uh, I'm looking at, well, I had two 2015 Stratomatic sets. I had two 2015 Stratomatic sets. And, um, and ultimately, I didn't know what to do with them because I wasn't really playing them. They don't have every player. So I, I, you know, I like playing with sets that have every player. I just like that anyway, but I do like the system. The system's fine. So I picked up the 2000, a beautiful, beautiful shape, a 2000 um, Stratomatic baseball season. Why? Because I wanted, you know, the Mets and the Yankees were in the world series that year and I wanted to play and, uh, Ray Sanchez was an amazing um, shortstop for the Mets, and I wanted to – he should be. I Hopefully hopefully he's a one. I don't remember. I don't know. I don't think I've ever had this season before. I had 2001, and I sold it a long time ago. But this is 2000, which is better because the Mets – here are the Mets in 2000. Gardo Alfonso, he's a one at second base. Holy smokes. He's good. Piazza is a four. What? Bordick is a three. Matt Franco. Robin Ventura is a two at third base. Todd Zeal is a four at first base. So they had a lot of a lot of these guys that I still know. Daryl Hamilton. I'm looking for their shortstop. Where is their shortstop? Now this set does not come with extra players. Melvin Mora. Ooh. Yeah, that TR, I don't know what that means. Benny Agbagiani. This was one of those guys that you have to write in the name. Rick Reed, Armando Benitez. Still have not found my shortstop. I think it was Ray Sanchez, wasn't it, in 2000? I think Ray Sanchez. I'm pretty sure it was Ray Sanchez. Or am I mixing up the name? Uh, let's see. Eric Wendell. Hmm. Well, maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not the guy I thought. Rick White doesn't seem to be the guy I thought. Maybe it was a year before. Shortstop Bordick. I didn't think Bordick may be their 2,000 shortstop. So let's, uh, yeah. No, the guy that I thought is not here. Maybe he's on the 99 team. That was the last year he was on. Let's check that out real quick here. So let me grab my phone and check out the uh, 2,000 Mets. Ooh, all right. I have a ton of stuff to show you guys, so just hang tight here. 
couple of minutes. And 2000, shortstop. Oh, yeah, it was Mike Bordick. Yeah. So I'm thinking of 1999. So now I'm not going to get. Let's think of the, the 1999 mess. Nineteen ninety nine Mets. Ray Ordonez, that's what I'm thinking of. Not Ray Sanchez, Ray Ordonez. His last year was in nineteen Wow. His last year with the Mets was in nineteen ninety nine. Oh no, wait a second. He plays in two thousand. He plays in two thousand, but in two thousand he only played in forty five games. So he may be the extra players that I need to find. He may be in the extra players. So Ray Ordonez is the guy I was thinking of, not Ray Sanchez. What's wrong with me? I'm getting old, man. Armando Benitez. Dennis Cook. John Olrood. Hampton. Could I have two shortstops? But maybe not. Maybe they didn't add him because he, he only plays one position. And since, Yeah, so he may not be here. Ooh, no big deal. I mean, I, I had two 2015 sets. This set may be interesting to somebody. Somebody may reach out to me and say, oh, I'll give you a 1999 or a 2001 for your 2000, which would be cool. I have no problem with that. So anyway, this is one of the things I received. And let's look at some other stuff that I got. I got this book. Aha, there it is. SDG Replay and BR Wells. How are you guys? Rube Marquardt. This is one of the craziest characters of baseball history. Holy smokes. So I picked this up super duper cheap. I don't even remember. Just a few dollars, three, four, five dollars. And uh, that's one of the things that I got. I got this book also maybe a week or two ago. Glory of Their Times. I also got it very cheaply. A hardcover. It looks nice in my library, even though I don't like the fact that this piece is kind of worn out a little bit. This is a great, uh, look at this. Uh, so somebody signed this. I'm not even sure who the signature this is. Not totally sure. Look at that. Happy opening day, Joe. With love. Maybe this was, I don't know who that was. Interesting. Got to figure out who that signature is. Look at that. That's cool. Anyway, it has a lot of stories here. The author is uh, Ritter. There's a lot of story about all the different players. Excerpt type, you know, like short short stories on each player. So that's a cool thing. So I got that book as well. So I got another thing here that's pretty crazy. Well, let me think that. Give me a second. Let me, I got to get the door. Come on. All right, sorry about that. Now, who's in this book? Let's take a look. No, no, you didn't miss any game of boxing. I just did a uh, – hold on. I just haven't gotten that yet. You didn't miss anything. I just showed you some uh, 
um, 2000 Stratomatic cards that I received. I traded them for 2015. I had 2015. The guy wanted to get rid of his 2000. But I didn't get the extra players. I got to look around for the extra players because I wanted Ray Ordonez. But I don't, okay, so who do, these, this book's got stories about some guys that you may or may not know. I don't know too much about these guys. So that's why I got this book, right? Let me see. Ah, okay. Uh, Rube Bessler or Bressler, Babe Herman, Ed Roosh, Bill Wamgas, Sam Jones, Bob O'Farrell, Speck to Porcer. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing these right. Lefty O'Doul, Goose Goslin, some of them I've heard of. Hank Greenberg, Paul Weiner. I've heard some of these guys, but I don't know too much about it. That's why I got this book to learn more about these guys from another era. So anyway, Rube, Wa uh, Rube Marquardt is in there. So I'll read a little bit about him before I go into the Rube Mar uh, Marquardt book that I got. Anyway, all right, so let's move on to a baseball game that I got, which is something that you guys may recognize and say, oh, my God, I had that when I was 10 years old. What is this guy doing? Not in the greatest of shape, but I traded it for something that I hadn't used and I had it in a, in a shoebox for many years. And, you know, it, it's replaceable. This is uh, impossible to get, hard to get. I, the box is a little bit in poor condition, unfortunately. It's got some tears on the side, you know. But I didn't spend very much on it, so I can't complain. I will get some tape and kind of tape the edges, unfortunately. And this is what it is. This is what it looks like. If you haven't seen this game, it's kind of very cool. Uh, uh, a lot of guys really like it. It's easy to play. A lot of us play this as kids. I did not, but a lot of other guys did. Got some special dice, unique dice. And here are the rules. Look at the game rules. First of all, it's the, the paper that they use is really nice, glossy paper. And here are the game rules. It's only like one, whatever size this is, 11 and a half by what is that? 11 and a half by 14? Let me get my 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 uh, tape measure. Hold on. Let's see. Oh, it's 11 and a half. Okay. Oh no, it's uh, by 16 and a half. What the heck? Or 17? This is by 17. Wow. 11 and a half, I guess, by 17, right? Yeah. No, 11, 11, 11 by 17. 11 by 17. Wow, this is cool. So anyway, I got this. That's the rules, this side and that side. And a lot of it is just teaching you about basic baseball stuff. Like it, like uh, starting regular uh, – I love this because this is really old school. I think this is the 71 set. And yeah, I got to read some of it to you. It's so beautiful, right? The way life was. Um, relief pitchers may pitch in both games of a doubleheader. If in the first game they do not pitch more than one and two th third innings, and in both games of a doubleheader, relief pitchers may pitch only for a total of five innings. Can you imagine that today? They pitch like five pitches, and they pull them. If a starter, if a starting pitcher also has a separate chart for pitching in relief, and he pitches more than five innings in one game, or more than five total innings in two games of a doubleheader then his starting chart is used after he has completed five relief innings. You know, really cool stuff. Uh, so you may remember this, and you may have had a blast with this. I picked up one of these. I traded it for some payoff pitch that I had that I'll never get to. Um, just like the way they wrote stuff. Sports Illustrated Major League Baseball game enables you to manage your favorite big league teams and players in most in the most realistic way possible. You can platoon your lineup to face left and right-handed pitchers, call for a steal, have your batter try for an extra base on a hit, strengthen your defense in the late innings, and bring in relief pitchers. In fact, you can apply all important strategy that a major league manager would employ in directing his team to a winning season. As you manage and complete against and compete against the various teams, you will begin to see how the months of research and the computerized data, computerized data in 1971, wow, work together to make this the most exciting and realistic baseball game you've ever played. And how the unique color coding system simplifies and speeds up play 
of the game. This game is so simple to play. Look at this. Look at this. This is the rules right here. So this is all like – this is telling you about how to play baseball, bunting. It, it, it tells you when to bunt, when you should bunt, when you shouldn't bunt. It gives you like a lot of that kind of thing. But the rules here are just right here. Okay, pitching sequence, batting sequence. The first batter of the game comes to bat. Manager of the team in the field turns to his starting pitcher's chart, which would be one of these, right? Let's see where the starting pitcher's chart. I had the Mets out. No surprise there. So this is the starting pitcher's chart. Where is that? Wait a second. Here it is, starting pitcher's charts. And it's by number. Like at the bottom, these are the, the – you got Nolan Ryan, Ray Sadecki, Jerry Kuzman, Gentry, Seaver, Taylor, McAndrew, and McGraw. That's who you got in this set, okay? And these are their numbers. Ryan is 30, Seaver's 41. And then you're going to roll three dice. And it could be a fly out. I think this is uh, – I can't remember. One is a strikeout. One Here it is. It tells you. This is, uh, the blue is a strikeout. So if on Seaver, if I roll a 23, it's a strikeout. If I roll a yellow, a yellow is a batter walks. So I got a walk there, a 28. I got another strikeout of 35. I got another strikeout of 37. That's how easy this is. Now, if it's a blank, I believe it goes, and, I, and I'm learning this, so don't, don't get on my – you guys are like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. I played that before. I said, okay. I don't know what I'm talking about. I admit it. So, All right, so then I guess if – if there's a blank, then you would go to the batter's card. Let's say Seaver's facing um, – who's a, who's a leadoff guy for the – for the? I, I think Matty Alou was like a leadoff guy for the Pittsburgh Pirates. 18. So then I roll, right? I roll an 18, and let's say I get a – something I can understand. A 20 would be an error. A 24 would be a G, which I believe a G on this list here. A G is a ground ball, ground ball, ground out force. That's it. So you just write ground out. And uh, I'm not sure if it tells you who the ground out goes to. I'm not sure about that. I don't, I don't know if that matters in this game. Some, but, but I know guys that play this game and know this game and love this game are going to be, you know, reaching out to me and, and telling me, no, uh, this is what you got to do. Oh, this is the way you play it. And, and that's what I love about actually making, you know, these things public. So I'm interested in playing this game. I want to have fun doing it. It's got three or four seasons, and then it's got a great players and history. And I don't care, you know, but it doesn't have every – I don't care. It doesn't have every, every player, but it's a classic 70s uh, set, which got me very excited. I want to really go into obscure things and, uh, and things that are not, you know, uh, kind of run-of-the-mill and – and just uh, the, the the typical stuff. So here you can see all the all this. These are all the team sets. Look how cool this is. This is just something different. There are no cards, and I know that's a drag. We all love cards. Nobody loves cards more than I love cards. So I'm a card fanatic. We know that. But this is cool too. I mean, this is uh, this is a different approach. And I'm sure that this was maybe a little bit cheaper than having all those cards, printing all that card stock, and so on and so forth. And here, oh, and, and one cool thing that I really liked, and I know some guys that watched my score, my score sheet, my top 10 score sheets. And this is another score sheet. Look at that, the Sports Illustrated score sheet. And this is super duper tiny. It only goes up to 10 innings. But some guys say, I love it small. I don't want this huge, you know, that's what she said. Um, I, I don't want this, this, this huge paper. Other guys say, I need the huge paper because that's what the professionals use. They use this big paper. And another guy texted me or emailed me, reached out and said, no, no, I just do everything on a notepad. You know, it's, it's a four by six or a three by five notepad. And I do my, my score sheets there because I'm moving around the ball field. And anyway, everybody, everybody's different. So that's very cool. But this is a cool classic 1972. Look at that right there, 1972. So this was printed out in 71. Sold as a 72. This is probably the 71. Um, if, I don't know. If, you see, I don't know where to look to see what season this is. How do you know what season it is? I don't know if it says it anywhere. I didn't read, like, every little thing. I guess I would look by, by, their, uh, by the players on the team. I could figure that out. But nowhere on here does it say what season it is. Hey, there, RJL is in the house. 
So nowhere here does it say what year it is. But it does say, it gives you the story about what happened that season. Let me show you. Let me read the Mets instead of the Phillies because the Mets I know a little bit more about. What did I do with the Mets here? Washington Senators. Pirates. Oh, the Mets should be at the bottom. I already don't want to tear any stuff up already. Just got it five minutes ago and I'm tearing it up already. Okay. Here it gives you like a little story of the season. Maybe through that you can figure out what year it was. Here it says... Let's look at this. Oh. All right. All right. It was a nagging kind of season for the Mets since most of their woes had to be traced to the players themselves and not to handy excuses such as bad luck or injuries. Even Tom Seaver was not immune. He did win the ERA title. So that has to be 71, right? Or did he win it in 70 as well? And did strike out a record 19 Padres. That's 1970. So this has got to be 1970. He sh- um, but he lost games he should have won. Cleon Jones, who led the National League in grounding into double plays. This is 1970, the year after their big year. Joe Foy came to fill out a hole at third base. That's when Ed Charles left, right? So this is 1970. This is 1970. So anyway, that's a story on this one. This is called Sports Illustrated Baseball. And that's it. It comes with these pa- these papers. Let me back this up a little bit so you can see more of the – it comes with these little tokens. It comes with a little baseball feel, which is very cool. I got more to show you. I got, little, I got some other stuff to show you. Now, here I got something very highly unusual for me. So strap – Put your seatbelts on. Yes. I'm never going to play this, but I wanted to look at it. Now, I didn't really carefully look at it because the picture wasn't that good, but I got it for 15 bucks. So, you know, it's a Sports Illustrated game for $15. Um, it's, It's generic. There's no teams. There's no cards. It's just like one guy plays the defense. One guy plays the offense. You get cards. There's plays there. Uh, you can be a, you can pick you can pick ball control or you can pick aerial again aerial attack, right? And uh, these are the instructions. Again, only two pages. It's very simple to play. You pick your play, right? This is basically how it plays. You pick the the letter of your play. You put it uh, or the number of your play, right? You say I'm doing uh whatever one of these. Something like that. You pick a number, you pick a play. You pick a play, and the defensive guy gets then gets these cards. These cards right here. And he puts down these cards. Defensive card. I put that down. Okay, this is your play. It's a J. And obviously, if I hit on the play that you're doing, it's gonna be um, you know, it's gonna be bad for you, right? It's gonna be like a sack or an interception or something like that. And there's one die, there's one D6, and I guess, I don't know how it works with one D6. I'm not totally sure because um, let me see on the plays, on the plays here, I have no idea how to play this. I even read the rules a little bit for like a few minutes. But there's one to 20. Some plays I can't do. I can't do these plays. And then there's A, there's a to J. So I gotta read it again, cause the, how do you? What is the D6 for? I don't understand what the D6 is for. There's a D6 in here somewhere. Maybe it says more on this on this board on these boards. I haven't opened up the boards either. This is a cool feel. Look at that. I know R- RJL just recently got into some football. I bought this before he did that though. So I'm, and I just bought it just for for. I'm not gonna play any football on my channel. I, ha- I did play a lot of f- football when I was a kid. I played uh, Stratomatic football. There it is. You put this together. Chance table. Oh, here here's this one to six. Okay. Okay, I see. All right. 
If it's a good play, then I roll, and it tells me long game, uh, field goal. Where's one? Where else is one to six? One to six. Time. Uh, Twenty-five kickoff table, long game, field goal. Hmm. I don't know. I still have to learn more about it, but that's the deal with that. So that's a Sports Illustrated football game, fifteen bucks. Just for the fun of opening a box and, and learning about it and looking at how they organized it. I thought it had some teams, though. That would have been cool because I wanted to get, like, Larry Zonka. I was a Larry Zonka fan. Bob Greasy, Larry Zonka, those guys. Well, I got more cool stuff coming up. You oh, here you go. Here's this other stuff. All right, so I ordered I, – well, I picked up real super-duper cheap – Replay Baseball, which I have, like, tons of. But these are the old-style cards, which I am addicted to. I love the old-style font in red. I love that. It's like a typewriter font. It's like the guy sat there with the cards, and he just typed them out. You know, I love that about this. It has some unusual innings for me. Uh, innings. It has some usual seasons for me, seasons that I'm not used to playing. Let me just put this down here. All right, like that. Okay, New York Yankees. This is going to be what season? This is 1961. Cleve Boyer. I'm playing 64 with payoff pitch, so these are guys I know. But I love these cards. I'm, I'm a, a fanatic for these cards. I, these cards are gorgeous. They're real easy to read. They're real old school looking. Large font. Old style, you know, font. Uh, just magnificent man this is 1961 i got these so super duper cheap such a great deal free shipping i couldn't say no you know and uh, they're old classic cards they don't make these anymore so that's got me so excited i love this replay baseball so i got um this is my 61 set right i got 61 set and uh let me see yeah 61 they were in second place it tells you their record but they write really small. Look at this, dude. Tiny. Can't see. I need a magnifying. Well, lucky I have a magnifying glass. So I don't. I don't. I don't need to say I need a magnifying glass because I have a magnifying glass. It's here somewhere. But I got. I got decent glasses now, and I got a real powerful light above me. So that's the 1961 set I ordered. That, that, at some point, that's a Canadian box, by the way. Then I got my 86 Mets. Woohoo! My 86 season. More. More classic teams. I want I also have 84. I want to play the San Diego Padres because there's this great documentary. They were a wacko team in 1984. Um, this is my 1986 and my 1927 uh, seasons. This I believe is 27. 1927, Jay Partridge from the Partridge family, uh, Gus Felix, Hank DeBerry, Harvey Kendrick, Butch Henline. Never heard of any of these guys. Don't know anything about these guys. But it came in the deal. It's cheap. I, every so often, I know the Murderers Row. I know that team. So I play those guys against some random team that I don't know. But at least this gives me – the good thing about this is it gives me a little roster because – uh, if you don't have the roster, when I play with Appa, I always mix. I mix up the teams, and I and I, I get the pinch hitters from one team, and I play. I put them on the wrong team. It's a mess. But at least here, I'll check if the guy's actually on the team. Got a ton of players here too. Holy smokes, this is thick. A lot of cards. Anyway, that's 1927, and now for the reason I bought all this this whole set. Yeah, where where are my Mets? Where are my 86 Mets? Just imagine I didn't, I didn't have the 86 Mets. Ah, let's look at the 86 Red Sox. Will Seaver be there? Aha, Seaver is there. There's Bill Buckner, one of the better players in history, baseball history. Wade Boggs, what a season for Wade Boggs. He was a beast. Jim Rice, Tony Armas, Dwight Evans, Don Baylor. Man, they had a good team. They had a good. They had a monster team. Roger Clemens. Then they have the tall pitching cards. These are classic. There he is. The man, the franchise, number 41, Tom Seaver. 
Wow, beautiful. And that's why I got this set. What I, what I do with the, oh, here it is, in here somewhere, I guess. I don't know what I do with the cover. Arr. I don't know what I do with the cover of that. So I'll find it. Just leave it over here on the side. It's probably in here somewhere. Ooh, there it is. I got it. So, yeah. So this is a fun game. Uh, you should try it if you haven't tried it. Replay baseball. I like the older one. I have the old, uh, you know, I like the older game. Simply, it was much simpler. It was a lot like Appa, except it's a little bit. It's like Appa on steroids. The guys were Appa players, and they said, let's do something that has more pitcher batter interaction. So they created this game, Replay Baseball. And here he is, the one and only Keith Hernandez. And one of the reasons I wanted this set, because I want to start playing some uh, some Ron Darling. Some Ron Darling. There he is. He gets tired in the eighth inning. So he can go to the eighth inning and he gets tired in the eighth inning. Then you go to his B grade, his B side, which is this side right here. I believe that's his, his tired side. His A side is his regular side during the whole game. Once he gets tired, then you go to his B side, you turn his card over. That's basically how you play this. Doc Gooden, a beast. But Ron Darling had a great season in 86, too. That was, I think, his best season ever. Got to check that out. I know RJL would like this. And this is a fun game, man. This is plays super-duper easy, laid back. Uh, you, it's easy to memorize the, the, the results so you don't have to kill yourself. And, you know, it's a leisure game. Some games are leisure games where you don't want to, like, really go in-depth all the time for everything. You don't want to calculate everything. Or roll extra dice. So I, for some reason, I got four sets, but I only I only see three sets. But I saw there's two sets there. Oh no no no! I got wait. This was twenty. This was twenty seven. I got sixty one twenty seven. Eighty six. I have four sets somewhere here, and I don't know where they are. I don't know where the other set is. Word. I don't know how to do it. Huh. Because that's 86 and 27. And then I showed you 61. Are there two sets in here? Maybe? No, this is just one set. This is my 61 set. I saw it the other day. So it's here somewhere, my friends. It's here somewhere. I did not lose it. It arrived. It arrived. All right. Ah, there it is. I see it. I see another set. Oh. Is that a set? Oh, no, that's, a, that's my fall classic baseball set. Hmm. Well, don't know where it is, uh, my friends. Don't know where it is. I'll find it. I'm not going to start looking now. So, know something else I got. This is over the last three weeks, so it's not all in one day. And I've just kind of been saving it. Just, you know, I, I'm working, so I can't get to everything right away. I started reading that Sports Illustrated game. But this is a beauty, man. This is a beauty. I'm not even going to open it here today. I will open it in the future. This is a 1988 game, one of the best Mets season. The ASG baseball game in shrink wrap, never opened before. Look at that. Exactly, RJL. Let me look at some of the comments. They don't offer it on their R on the replay site. Season no longer available. Baseball, more replay. Football is so much different then. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Lou was a leadoff hitter for the Pirates, but not in 71. And, yes, this must be a 70 set. That's what I thought. Strategy football, show you'll give critique the most realistic game. Oh, you know, most realistic game. That's a tough one, RJL. Have a copy of old Sports Illustrated pennant race game. 2000 season, great choice, Tony. Unfortunately, didn't come with the extra players because I want to play with Ray Ordonez, man. He's, he should be a one. He better be a one. Because he would – do you ever see that? That There's a little uh, a video, like a, a highlight on, on YouTube. Check out the highlights of Ray Ordonez. 
He was he was a magician. He was like the Javi Baez of his day. And after seven years with the Mets, he disappeared. He was poof. He was gone. You know, they 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 the, the Grom is they scratched the Grom in tonight's game. Why? Because he had a sore something. Oh no, a stiff, a stiff. What? Imagine Tom Seaver. Imagine Tom Seaver or Steve Carlton or Bob Gibson being like, oh, I'm a little stiff. What the heck? Of course you're stiff. You're freaking a human being. Human beings get stiff. Once you start pitching for a while, you'll, you'll loosen up. <laughs> what is going on? Dude, you're stiff. Come on. Oh, man. Anyway, I'm, I'm looking for the last set. This is bugging me now. I don't know the last sentence. I don't know. Huh. It's weird. I had four sets. I had a 61, a 27, an 86, and one other one. And I can't remember. I got to look at what I bought. I gotta look. Oh, another thing I got to show you guys that I got about a month ago. Get ready for this. All right. Everything fell apart. Who cares? Boom, my friends. See if you can guess what year this is. All right. And let me move some stuff here. <laughs> to the side. Oh, whoa, oh, Jesus Christ. Hold on a second. All right, here goes. Look at that. Who can get, who had these as a kid? Look at that. Remember that? Remember the top was one color, the bottom was another color? Remember that season? That was amazing, dude. Look at the back of these cards, how gorgeous they were. Check out Raleigh Fingers. What a great shot of his mustache. There he is. The franchise, the New York franchise. The Walrus. Thurman Munson. The Coos. Bill Russell. Before he, he, was a, he was an outfielder when he started. Dave Cash. This guy, heck of a ball player. Kenny Reed, Lee May. Dave McNally, one of the 20-game winners on a 69 team. What year is this? Did anybody figure it out yet? Top 75. We've got a winner. Top 75, but it's a representative of, of course, 1974, right? Because they took the picture, right? They took the picture in October, November of 74. So it was that team that finished the season that was still there because by the next spring, they're going to have new guys coming in, you know? So, yeah. So this is basically the 74 team. So if you want this, like if you want the 1969 Mets, you got to buy the 1970 top season. The only problem was is that I couldn't, um, Ed Charles had retired. He wasn't in the, in, the, in the set. So I had to get a 69 version of Charles and pop him into the set. I got a 69 set of the Mets, which is amazing. But pretty soon it's going to be uh, the 50th anniversary of the 1973 Season set, and that's going to be that's going to be big. Ron Santos, Cesar Geronimo, Andy Thornton, Joe Rudy, great shot. This I remember having these as a kid, man. I love to go through my my baseball cards, and what thing that fascinated me uh, was the the colors. The colors are amazing, right? Well, this set has great great colors, and they started having fun poses, like they were telling the guy. Like, all the guys seem to be smiling and laughing and kind of enjoying themselves they moved away from like that stiff kind of portrait they were just like no man they were telling they must have been telling them jokes saying cheese say cheese or something eric Soderholm with the twins brooks robinson all-star third baseman so he was still a, an all-star yankees bobby bonds there you go chuck taylor with the expos dave winfield with the padres Hey, Douglas, how are you, brother? 
Right. The year of the season for Topps cards is always the year before. You see, RGL knows, man. He's in the know. So I got now I got 75, 76, 77. I'm looking for 78, and I want to get 74. 74 is going to be a tough one. That's going to cost me an arm and a leg. I'm going to have to not eat for like a week. But that's good. I already lost like 40 pounds, so. I have a lot of extra money because I don't I don't buy any food. I only I survive on beer. But uh, all my results are really good, man. My doctor said, "Dude, what are you doing?" I said, "I'm just drinking beer." I said, "Oh, you're doing great, Jim Merritt." In my in my in my pitch league, he led the league. He was my pitcher. He led the league in ERA in 1969. George Foster, the beast, million dollar bum, the ten million dollar bum. Rusty Staub, the Grand Orange, Dick Green. Who else? Bill Madlock. Four, four, he, he had four batting championships, didn't he? Guy who could hit, man. Elliot Maddox. This guy was never lived up to his expectations. Played all over the place. Mets, Yankees, Yankees, Mets, Mets, Yankees. And still didn't really never did very Wilbur Wood. He had 200, 200 starts one, one season. Wayne Garrett, that's a cool picture. It's actually with another guy standing right next to him. I don't know who that other guy is. Could be like John Milner, maybe. Two for the price of one in that picture. Bill North, 100 stolen bases. And uh, that's uh, Toby Hara. Dan Dreesen, Ron Hodges, Bill Monday. This is 1975 for the 1974 teams. Because they remember they took the pictures in 74. Ah, they're, they're ringing my bell. What she said, hold on a second. And that's it, my friends. That's the stuff that I've been getting over the last month. Kind of been lurking around and finding stuff. I found some more stuff today. I ordered some stuff here and there. Believe it or not, it just didn't come all at once. It's been over a while that I've gotten this stuff. This was a big purchase about a, six weeks ago. 1975 season. Because it's going to get more expensive. This is a nice set. It came already in the in all the sleeves, protective sleeves. Then it came in the, the binder. I like it that way because otherwise I kind of treat them, I don't treat them nice. So I just bought myself a binder for my 1980 set and I want to put it all in, in, in the, but these are good. It just kind of goes along with what we do when we play our tabletop games, kind of relive, relive the past a little bit. There's John Milner, this they, they painted a hat on him. I'm wondering if this comes with the traded set. Maybe not. They that that you can tell that hat, hat is painted on there. Sandy Alomar. Let's see. Yeah. Sandy Alomar played with the Angels in 74. And then he was traded to the Yankees. But that's a painted on hat. Frank Tavares. Remember him, man. He could steal. He's faster than the wind, that guy. Uh Carl Yastrzemski, look at that. Holy smokes, wow. I know Lou Rock is around here. He passed away. John Matlack, 
Man, the, the Mets had a great pitching staff. They had a terrible ownership. Reggie Jackson, this is, I believe, oh, no. This is next to last year with the A's, right? His last year with the A's was 75. In 76, he goes to Baltimore. 77, he signs with the Yanks. Reggie Jackson, the last year that you get him in the A's uniform. Rudy May, Ed Cranepool, steady Eddie Cranepool, retires in 79. Mike Marshall, didn't he have over 100 appearances one year? Mike Marshall. Rennie Stennett, he went, didn't he go seven for seven, Rennie Stennett? Wasn't he famous for going seven for seven? Giles, how are you, brother? Luis Melendez, I have him on my inside pitch lead. Batted 300 in 1970. He's my pinch hitter. I am for 28 at-bats, so I got to really plan those at-bats out. Paul Popovich, he was uh, – I, I released him. It was a mistake. I don't look at his batting average. It was 250. I could have kept him because he's a good defender. I screwed up. But anyway, you, you live and you learn. And uh, let's see. What else we got here? Roy White. Uh-oh, there he is, the franchise. Sad, man. He was not a happy camper, man. They made his life miserable. You know, uh, if you watch the, uh, the, the interviews with him after he was traded to the Reds, and they ask him, you know, how do you feel about wearing a different uniform? You can tell that he's not happy about it. He does, you know, say that, well, I'm playing with an all-star team now. It's an amazing team that I got on the field that, you know, out there every day, every fifth day, or every fourth day, whatever it is. You know, it's great to be in Cincinnati. But you can tell he lost his joy. There was something that killed him. And the Mets management killed him because he, he even tells you, he goes on this TV show, this talk show in July of 1977. I'm talking about Tom Seaver now, right? Tom Seaver right there. You can see he goes on this talk show with Pete Rose. Pete Rose was always an attention hog. He was always a camera hog, loves the camera, this guy, always wanted the attention. Um, Tom Seaver was not so much that way. He just was a guy that knew that he was popular and ha had a responsibility to the to the to you know to the fans. And um, but you could tell that he was disappointed leaving New York. He told you know he even told the guy, "Oh, we're keeping our place in New York. We love New York. There's no other place like New York." You know, and that's the, even though he eventually settled out in California. I mean, the guy's from Fresno, but at that time, you know, he he had his life in New York. And for the Mets not to give this guy the best contract in baseball is really a a total injustice. It's a crime. It's 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 a crime. I mean, the Mets should have locked him up, and he should have never worn a different uniform. This guy is one of the top ten pitchers, and you can argue the top five pitchers in baseball history in the modern era, right, the modern era, which is different than saying, well, you know, uh, back in 1901, you know, you got a guy that had an ERA of 101 every season. Yeah, but you couldn't hit a home run in, 10, you know, in, in 1901. The, the ball fields were 600 feet. So nobody nobody swung for the fences. They just tapped the ball. They hit, you know, hit runs and, and bunts and that sort of thing. So, yeah, so, the, you know, anyway. Um, so in the modern era, if you look at Tom Seaver's stats till the end, man, he had one bad season, but that's because he was injured the last year that they basically let released him from the, the Reds. Man, Tom Terrific was truly terrific. And one of the most disappointing, saddest parts for me of, of baseball history and Mets history was that they ever let 
Tom Seaver go. Never should have let Tom Seaver go. Never should have let Jerry Kuzman go. Should, you're, you're in New York. You're, you know, you're making money. You should have invested some money into the team, gotten some free agents. Maybe you wouldn't have made it to the World Series, but maybe you would have been more competitive. That's all Seaver wanted. Seaver wanted the front office to make an effort at improving the team so that they could compete so he would be on a competitive team because he was tired of, you know, even though, look, he w- he was in the World Series in 69. He was in the World Series in 73 with not a very good team. Both times they weren't a very good team because, you know, the, the, the whole, the whole um, philosophy, you know, of, of the management at the time, the ownership at the time, um, was that hey we're not going to spend money they were they were they, you know they believed in the old kind of slave system of plantation system where the the team owner is the 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 the, the real plantation owner and all the players are the slaves and the players take what you tell them to take you're gonna if you didn't do good that well you're gonna lower their salary you know and they have to accept it because of the reserve clause well this was the the the, the era beyond the reserve clause and the players knew what the hell was going on. And now with Andy Messerschmidt, you know, he's he's now a free agent, you know, and he make, signs a big contract and he wins that that arbitration uh, case. And uh, and players are starting to, to now, you know, basically uh, claim claim their rights, their rights as 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 uh, as workers, you know, as employees. As professionals, you know, um, as tradesmen, as, as craftsmen, whatever you want to call it. But uh, so Sieber was actually he represented play. He was a sp- player spokesman, right? He was a player rep. And I know that uh, M. Donald Grant used to call him the commie. He used to call him the communist. And this was uh, an insult to to, to Sieber. I mean, this is during the Cold War, dude. You don't call people a commie. I mean, what the hell? You know, this is, uh, um, and and that's, Seaver was just really totally betrayed, totally uh, ashamed. He was, disc- you know, discredited. He was uh, just unappreciated. Tom Terrific, man, that's my rant for the day on Tom Terrific. But, hey, this is one of the, the, the biggest injustices. Yeah, there's been a lot of injustices in baseball history. Um, but this is one of the biggest injustices in baseball history. The Mets franchise, who was led by really, truly a moron, a rich moron, who, uh, you know, just because you, you got money in your bank and you own a team doesn't mean that you should, you know, uh, oppress and, uh, and exploit players. You're making money. Let the players make money. I'm all for the players owning the, the, the ballparks. I think they should re- really eliminate all the owners. I don't think we need owners. I don't think we need ballpark owners. We need managers. You know, we need general managers. Let the ball players own the ballpark, right? And let the prices come down and let the owner, the, the ballpark, the, the players be, you know, uh, own the ballpark and they get a cut of, of, the, uh, of the profits, you know, like a cooperative. I mean, they're the ones with the talent. They're the ones that 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 we, that we go to see. We don't go to see the owner. The owner builds a park. A lot of times, those parks are built with public funds. They're built with city funds. Okay, so the city pays for the park to be built. The owner sits there and collects. That's the American way, you know. And uh, and and then the players have to fight for for their for every penny. We're talking about a possible strike next year. Why? Because there's money in baseball. And the players deserve that money because some players, they dedicate their life. They play five, six, seven years. They blow out their arm. They blow out their knee. And they're done. Whatever money you made in those seven years, you got to now live for the rest of your life on. you know, Or you got to go into a regular job. And they do a lot of them. They work a regular job. But, hey, you know, you had a chance to be somebody, you know, that, 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 that really brought, you know, entertainment, brought joy, brought excitement into, into society. You should be rewarded for that, especially if the owner is getting, you know, is collecting, you know, uh, obscene profits. So I'm, I'm a guy that's 110 percent behind the players. Um, and, and anyway, that's my rant on Tom Seaver. That's 
he, him with the Mets, this is a very sad era for me. I love I love him in this era because, but you could see he is not happy. This is the best pitcher in baseball for that era, and he should be happy. He should be like, this should be the most. But he just had a a horrible, dark, you know, experience with that with the the, the, the M. Dow Grant management team over there. Um, nightmarish. I have a pin commemorating Stennett's feet. He did have seven for seven, right? Arnold Hunter says, great show today. <laughs> Good for you, man. Glad you enjoyed it. I just went on my uh, on my rants. Don Baylor, he passed away recently. Doc Ellis. Oh, man, wait, let me. I, I, you can't see Doc Ellis. Look at Doc Ellis. Did you ever see the picture of him in the curlers? Oh, man, this guy was a – he was a character – what a personality, you know. He, but he was a heck of a pitcher. He, and he was the the reason the Yankees made it to the World Series in 1976. The Yankees made a trade. They traded Doc Medich, right, to the Pittsburgh Pirates for Doc Ellis. Why would the Pirates let go of Doc Ellis? This guy was a good pitcher. For Doc Medich, who was a mess, and they threw in Willie Randolph, so the Yankees get a starting second baseman for the next 20 years, 15 years, and they get a star pitcher who wins 17 games with a three ERA in 1976. And I know that RJL is going to have 19 – he has 1976 on his channel, and he will have uh, uh, Doc Ellis pitching at some point. But come on, what are you doing, Pirates? Jesus. He is a good pitcher and said he was the reason the Yanks went to the World Series in 76. You know, he, he won 17 games for them, and that's 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 worth recognition, 17 games. It's a lot of games. Buddy Harrelson, wow. Larvell Blanks, I met him. In Del, he's from Del Rio, Texas. Met Larvell Blanks. He's from Del Rio, Texas. He came to Little League opening day, and I was the opening day manager because the year before we had won the World Series and uh, the Little League World Series in that town, whatever. Not the not the Little League official Little League World Series, just in that town. Anyway, yep, he's from uh, Del Rio, Texas. You can check that out. And uh, who else? Dick Allen, Richie Allen, changed his name. What a character he was as well. A lot of stories about Dick Allen. He was a uh, an unorthodox type guy. Herb Washington. He's right. He look, they have him in the running position because that's all he ever did. He never batted, and he never played the field. Herb Washington never played, never never batted, never played the field. His card is a little beat up, by the way. That's too bad. Some of these cards are a little rough around the edges, to be honest with you. But new sets like this go for like three thousand bucks. You know, like mint sets. This was a cheapie, but it's still a. Uh, uh, Ah, oh, the Mets. There's a team. Yeah. Yogi Berra. Skip Lockwood was with the. There he is, George Medich. He's a joke, George Medich. What did George Medich do with the Yankees? He had a two. All right, he had a 2.95 ERA in 1973. Where's my my? Uh... Damn. What did you do with my? Uh... I don't know where it is. It's somewhere here, somewhere. I need my uh, my Sherlock Holmes magnifying glass. Ah, found it. Ha ha. All right, where is it? Doc Medich, where is he? Ah, there he is. All right, Doc Medich, two ninety five in seventy three, but then he goes up to three sixty in seventy four. And I don't have his 75 stats, but I know his 75 stats weren't all that great. But that was it. That's the whole. And for that, he, they got Willie Randolph and Doc Ellis, which is nuts. Louis Tiant is there. Another car that's kind of beat up. Some of these cars I may have to, I, ha, I may have to replace. Willie McCovey in, in a San Diego Padres uniform. I remember him as a giant. Mangual has a really beat up card. That's a beat up card, man. Ouch. Angel Mangual.
Some cars are really nice. Some of them are kind of beat up. So I'll replace those little by little. Not, I might replace every one. I'll replace the ones that are in the worst condition. Some of them are in really good condition. Richie Hebner, highest paid player for the Mets in 1979, 200000 He hated New York. This guy hated New York. Pete Lecoq, he was the son of that uh, TV show guy, the, 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 the game show guy, wasn't he? Greg Nettles with the Tigers. He was still with the Tigers. Hadn't come to the Yankees yet. Nolan Ryan with the Angels. Hadn't gone to Houston yet. By 1980, he'll be with Houston. Chick Fred Chicken Stanley. This is my 1975 baseball card set. Vita Blue, another guy who used to really give Charlie Finley fits. But he was a beast. 182, 280, 328, 325. He was a beast. Nineteen seventy one, he was twenty four and eight. Wow. Three hundred strikeouts. One eighty two ERA. Manny Sanguin, he was a character. It's probably summertime and he's got his jacket button to the top. Tom House, he runs a lot of uh, camps for kids now, pitching camps all over the United States. Gaylord Perry, who would name his son at this time Gaylord? It's just, what kind? I don't, I don't know. I mean, what, what were they thinking? That's kind of weird to, to name your son Gaylord. I mean, I don't know what the history of that name is, but it would definitely change my son's name by naming that. Gene Tennis, he had a he had an, an amazing 1972 World Series. What a cr great World Series! He was the MVP, I believe, of that World Series. Check me for for fact check me on 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 this stuff. Al Oliver, Tim John. I'm going to get the 1974 season, which is 1973. Represent 1973. That's going to be great. I'm going to start looking and start sniping. Got to start sniping. That's the way, you, you know, you got to do it. You got to watch and snipe and watch and snipe and watch and snipe. And after a month or two, you may get one. You got to be patient. Jim Wynn, the toy cannon. And he, this, this is a guy that only his mother could love. All right. And there he is, Frank Robinson. Wasn't he a designated hitter, uh, player manager of the of the Indians? Chris Chambliss. Got some weird-looking sideburns. Scary sideburns. He's, there's Tim McCarver. Old Timmy. 1975. Rod Carew, one of the top hitters in history. Rod Carew. Let's let's hear from 67 to 74, 292, 273. Ah, but now, 332 starts in 69, 332, 366, 307, 318, 350, 364. Jesus Christ! Brad Carew, second base, first base. Could have played third base, outfield. Come on, that guy's an athlete, man. That guy could do it all. Captain Carl in the house. Ah, he caught Hank Aaron 715 home run while he was in the Braves bullpen. <laughs> That's a good one, yeah. That's right. I remember that. <laughs> These are all your rookie sensations for 75. Let's see if we have see anybody here worth mentioning. Dennis Leonard. You just pitched in my Fall Classic game that I just played today. It's on my channel. Check out Fall Classic Baseball. It's a fun game. Uh, Jim Rice. Jim Rice. Who else? Gary Carter. He's a rookie at 75. John Denny, a rookie in 75. Raleigh Eastwick. Jim Kern. I remember he had a couple of good seasons. More rookies. 
Keith Hernandez. Oh my God, check out Keith Hernandez's picture. Let's see if you can see it. Wait, let me try to get it. No, that's not it. Uh, there he is. No, that's not it. Patty, there he is. Keith Hernandez, right? Yep, that's Keith Hernandez. Funny. Doesn't even look like him. He's hilarious. You got to watch uh, the Mets uh, tonight. He's he's a funny character. Boog Powell was still playing. He's like 500 pounds here. First base for the Orioles. 1970. This is 75 card. All right, this is on my last pages here. Ted Martinez, who knows? He's a Met. Lacey. Harmon Killebrew. Wow. Still there. He looks like he's 60 years old. Claudel Washington. Lindy McDaniel. Oh, he's around a long time. He's with the. Oh, yeah. He was around since 55 with the Cardinals. All the way to 74. Wow. But he was a. Uh, Yeah, he was in the bullpen. He was in the bullpen later. His last year's games. Yeah, he was in the bullpen for a long, for forever, man. Innings pit. He was always in the bullpen. Wait a second. Lindy McDaniel was always in the bullpen. Yeah, I'm looking at his uh, his innings pitch. Never had more than 132 innings pitched. I thought he was a starter for some reason. Anyway. Bob Bedell. Oh, and Hank Aaron. Look at Hank Aaron. He's with the Brewers. This was his last year. He plays 74 with the Braves and then goes to the Brewers for 75 and 76. So his that, his card is almost perfect. That's a pretty card. Anyway, this is uh, unboxing extravaganza. Long show today. What was that? An hour? Eh, it's not that long. I still can't find one set, one of my replay sets, and that's driving me nuts. It's annoying me. Because it's got to be here. And I bet you it's in the most obvious place. Let me see my drawers. Hold on a second. Ah, yep. Here it is. Not done yet. I knew I didn't. I had it. All right. Replay Baseball 1969. This is not the new version. The one, it's still a Ventura version, a 6x6 six six version, but they're smaller mini cards. And, of course, you know, any self-respecting Mets fan must get 69s in every, every company available. And uh, there it is. 69. Tom Terrific. Where is, where's Tom Terrific? Where is he? So I got four sets. I got a great deal on these. I'm very lucky. Now I got two 69 sets. So at some point, if somebody says, hey, do you got any any uh, replay to trade or to sell or anything? I'll be like, I don't, I, I, I'm not into selling anymore because I got so much stuff that I don't want to keep on buying stuff. I just rather trade with you, you know? Like if you have something that I want and I have something that you want, I'd rather just trade. That way I don't keep on, you know, I'm running out of room. So anyway, let's look at. Tiny cards, but it comes with your, your ballpark card. It's got your field where everybody plays. Oh, and this is cool because it gives you all their all their uh, all their ratings, so you don't have to look through the cards. Oh, look at that! Two sets. It's got two 1969. Oh, no, one is a lineup, and the other one is the batting team batting average. 100 wins. They had 100 wins in '69. Ag Jones, Shamsky, Swoboda, Tom, terrific. I'm terrific. Look at that. I got to pitch. I got to play some. I got to start playing some replay baseball. I got to play some replay baseball. So I'm going to I'm gonna have to start playing other games less and replay baseball more because I love replay baseball. It's fun. And when, but I never give my – I always try to do tutorials and learn to play when I'm not warmed up to it yet. And it's it's a struggle sometimes. You know, because you got to remember two numbers and you got to add them. That's the only thing. And, you know, I, I've got like kindergarten math skills. 
So, and then guys get mad at me and say, you didn't do a good job. And I said, all right, well, I'm sorry. Um, um, you know, I'll, I'll do better next time. Anyway, this is uh, 69 replay. I got four replay sets. And now I just showed you the box of the ASG. I will do a bo an opening of Clubhouse Baseball and ASG. I will do both those openings. And I have a special surprise for my next unboxing, which is going to blow your mind. Something that's very, very, very hard to find. And I got that coming up in my next unboxing whenever I'm ready. Not next Tuesday or not next Thursday or not next week or not next year. I don't know when. But in my next unboxing, I will... Um, I will uh, have some amazing, amazing sets to show off. Yes, sir. But hey, if anybody knows where I can get a set of the 2,000 extra players for Stratomatic, let me know. Text me, email me, call me, uh, knock on my door at midnight. I don't care. Uh, reach out to me on, on Facebook. Reach out to me on, on YouTube. I want a set of the extra players for the year 2000. Even if I have to trade for a set with extra players, I'll do that too. It doesn't matter. They're out there. Guys, you know, like me, I, I get a set, I play it a while, and then I just trade it for a different set. And it, it goes back and forth. It's all in the family, right? It's all it's all good. It's all comes around. That's why I take care of all my sets. And if you know me, you know I have all my uh, – every time I play a game, I go through – through my, uh, you know, I share my sleeves that I use and and all that stuff, and and uh, I take care of my sets. So when I do trade them with you, you can be sure that you're going to get something of value. You know, I'm not just spinning on them and sitting on them and sewing them all up, and then uh, trying to take care of them as much as possible. So now I feel good. I found my set. I couldn't find this fourth set. I got 27, I got 61, I got 69, and I got. And I got uh, uh, the one I really wanted, 1986, which just that one alone is worth what I paid for the four of them. So everything else is basically just, you know, just a uh, cherry on top, if you will. So that's it, guys. This is Tony Porter, Cards and Dice TV. Thanks for all the, all the visits I had. I had a, a visit from a lot of guys, and RJL was here for a long time today. So he had some free time in the afternoon. Check out his stuff. SDG Replays does fine work. I, I love, enjoy his, his uh, I love when he does cards. And see, I'm a big cards and dice guy. And I'm a baseball guy. So if you're not playing cards and dice and you're not playing baseball, I usually am busy doing other things. If you're doing playing cards and dice and baseball, I usually can make time uh, sometimes. Right now it's tough for me because I got three hours every night. Plus I got my two leagues that I play in. Plus I got my work. Plus, I got all my all my uh, all my projects, which is like six, seven, eight projects. If you follow my channel, check out my channel on YouTube. It's called CND TV. Um, and uh, Br Wells, it's got a great uh, uh, Facebook page as well. Check out Universal Baseball Association. Come and join that. You get a lot of uh, RJL puts a lot of great stuff on there. So does uh, Kurt Berland. He does amazing stuff on there. Um, so join, check out Universal Baseball Association. It's named after the book. Go to the Facebook group there and ask to join. We will welcome you as a family member. Wesley King was in the house sharing his knowledge of the Pirates. Um, Dan Douglas came by and said hi. Clinton Parks. Clinton Parks does great stuff. Um he, but he's only he's very uh, you know, he he only shares it with like one you know uh, with with one page. He only puts posts his stuff on one page. So if you're not you know a big fan of that one page, if you go to all like six other pages, you're not going to see his stuff on those. You know, and uh, but he's very consistent and he does a lot of great work. He does a lot. He plays a lot of Stratomatic, I believe, but he plays some other things too. And, and he, he'll correct me if I'm wrong. Trust me, he's not going to hold back. Um. Let's see what he said, actually. It's always interesting. Try not to laugh. I have 1981, found them in Goodwill. <laughs> and I laughed. I tried, but I, I wasn't successful. And I guess he's talking about replay. 
giving me the very same natural shots I try to find when I post my baseball games. Oh, I think he's talking about the baseball cards. That's what I think he's talking about. He found the 1981 at Goodwill. Huh. I think he's talking about the, yeah, the baseball cards. Top set. Oh, okay. So RJL says his favorite top set is 76. And I have, I have that. I Because I, I have, I'm, last year I started the Yankees 1976 season using inside pitch. I still, I, I it's still going. I'm like a game 60, something like that. Um, the reason I played that season is because that's the first game I ever rolled as a kid, as a 13-year-old. First first season I ever rolled, 1976, APA. That's why I got my APA placemat, because I'm loyal to, to my first love. Okay? APA took my virginity. Uh, uh, my bad Vicky Sue Robinson – uh, my bad, uh, Rita Ward, Vicky Sue Robinson saying, turn the beat around. Jeez, I'm losing it. All right. He told, okay, uh, Giles Thibault was here. Oh, wait, he told me that's not his name. Jillies or something like that. He corrected me on that. I don't know if he's still around. But... Jills, Jills, Jills Thibault. That's what I think. His, that sounds like he sounds like he's from Scandinavia, like Norway, Finland, uh, Denmark. With a name like that, right? And he's probably from there. I see him around a lot. He's a good guy. Dan Douglas, thanks for stopping by. There's a, and uh, RGL probably has a game tonight. The guy's amazing. I can't keep up with him. I, yeah. I play games, but it's all different things. And he's he's very organized. And Arnold Hunter, I've not seen him around for a while, but he said hello. And that's a great thing. Captain Carl. He always stops by, giving us a little knowledge on, on Tom House. And he's going to watch this later on. A lot of guys are going to watch it. These are very popular, these unboxings. And I think I did a good job today. And, and, and I'll admit that I don't think, like, every unboxing is is all that great. Um, Kurt Berglund does great unboxings. They're hilarious. Um but I, I'm talking about myself. I think that I, a lot of times we, we, we kind of make it one dimensional. Like I only show one thing, one box. Okay, I got this. And I go into like every aspect of it. Every That's okay. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with that. And that's sometimes good. Um, but today, the type of stuff that I was showing were books, replay baseball cards. It wasn't like game rules. Um, Although I did spend more time when I went to Sports Illustrated Baseball. I did spend a little time on that, a little bit more time reading the rules and sharing the rules and going over a little bit. Not as much as I, sh I could have, I should have maybe. And that's one of my weaknesses maybe. So if you guys want me to do another one with something that I, that I have on here at some point, I will go come back and just record it. And then I'll just add it to my channel. It'll be like, okay, I'm going to do an in-depth unboxing of – Sports Illustrated Baseball, which you can still get a modern, ver a more modern version on eBay for about 60 bucks. So there's a guy that's actually producing these. He's modernized the great, the greatest teams, the greatest players. And there's a ton of greatest players. And you get a, di I think he sells you a disc where you can print them out and you get every player in history or a lot of players, over a thousand or 2000 players, something like that. I don't know that much about the game. I just want to play one season or two, get a feel for it. Maybe meet some people that are into that Sports Illustrated game. Maybe, maybe we can revive that game because, you know, I read the reviews on, on Board Game Geek, and a lot of guys love that game. They said, hey, I, had, I played that game for so many hours as a kid. I loved that game. It was fun. So maybe, who knows, somebody will reach out to me and say, hey, let's revive this thing, man. And I'll be like, hey, yeah, let's see what we can do. Let's put it together. I don't know if anybody owns the rights to that. I don't know if Sports Illustrated owns the rights to that. I don't know. Uh, we got to find out, I guess, uh, you know, in this country. But it's been a long time. I don't know if you, uh, how many years, uh, you know, copyrights go for. But I think it's 99 years or something for some stuff. But I don't know if everything is not, everything is not always copywritten, believe it or not. You know that the movie Night of the Living Dead by George Romero was never copywritten? And that's why everybody comes out with uh, Night of the Living Dead. They have so many, you know. 
uh, Night of the Living Dead remakes. Everybody and his uncle does that. But uh, anyway, I, 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 I veer off, off, uh, off course. Tony Porter, Cards and Dice TV, CND TV, YouTube channel. Thanks for stopping by. I had a blast sharing all my stuff. I will talk to you soon after the Mets game tonight. Adios.